he won't reveal his face or even his full name. But 52-year-old Mohammed wants his story told. He has trouble walking now after spending a year confined to a 35-square-foot jail cell as a U.S. prisoner of war in Afghanistan. Our cells were like cages, he explains. We couldn't see anything outside. These are what those cells look like. Roughly an hour's drive from Kabul, the detention facility at Bagram is veiled in secrecy, except for a few carefully choreographed glimpses like this media tour two years ago. The military won't disclose the names of its detainees or the reasons for continuing to hold them. Somebody had reported that I was helping the Taliban, Mohammed tells us, which would be the last thing in the world I would do. He says he never saw any evidence against him, but believes neighbors turned him in following a land dispute. Mohammed says he's never supported the Taliban. In fact, he says he's an educator who even teaches girls in school. He claims to be trained as an engineer, not as a terrorist. There are now 3,000 alleged insurgents detained at Bagram, five times as many as when President Obama took office. The military says it's providing safe and humane care, but our repeated requests for a tour or even an interview were declined. When we asked to visit, at first the U.S. military approved, but then canceled our trip. Is this another Guantanamo? It's worse than Guantanamo. It really is because they have fewer rights. Daphne Eviatar is an attorney for Human Rights First, a nonprofit advocacy group. She's interviewed nearly 20 detainees who've been released and was allowed to watch several detainee hearings at Bagram. There was no evidence presented. There was no questioning of the government's evidence, whether this person had done anything wrong, whether he deserved to be in prison. So that's the real problem. You have a complete lack of due process. Her report documented stories of detainees held from seven months to seven years without learning the evidence against them or getting a lawyer. We're not going to win this war by making enemies of the local population. And unfortunately, sweeping people up and putting them in prison without fair hearings makes enemies of the local population. The additional surge forces are taking the fight to the enemy, so captures are way up. Republican U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham has been an attorney in the Air Force and has visited Bagram. He supports the Obama administration's plans to expand the detention facility. The more the Afghan people think we're winning and trust us, the more people we're going to capture. So the good news for our troops is that we've got people off the battlefield that were shooting at them last year. Graham says so many detainees are still jailed because the war isn't over. The goal, he says, is to transfer prisoners into Afghan control, eventually. Here's the dilemma for U.S. forces. You capture these people on the battlefield in a firefight. The local community tells you this is the bad guy. We're not going to turn him back over to an Afghan legal system that is uh, full of corruption and doesn't have capacity. So Mohammed says there's no doubt criminals are there, but he believes many are unjustly held. His once positive view of the U.S. has changed. This affected my family, my life, my work, he says, and that makes us angry. This detention center may soon get even bigger. The Department of Defense has asked contractors for bids to expand the facility to house 5,500 detainees, costing as much as $100 million. Seth Doan, CBS News, Kabul.